The NRB mission is to advance biblical truth. I'm so pleased today to see some radio titans here. We, Dr. Dobson has been a radio man. We've got the Bot Network here today, Rich Bot. Um, what a tremendous name and legacy on radio. Transworld Radio, Lauren is here somewhere over here. Um, this is the core of NRB, radio, advancing biblical truth. You know, Barry McGuire's here. We've got something very exciting that we're working on, uh, really urging all Christians, Christian leaders, Christian laymen, Christian broadcasters to get united uh, around the main thing, which is the sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. What if we all were saying the same thing, focused and together? In the book of Acts, they turned the world upside down. They filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. Well, that's what NRB is about. Secondly, to promote media excellence. I see Paul Lauer here. You know, I, I think about what's happening in film. You know, 10, 20 years ago, Christian film, not much. But we've really seen new levels of writing, acting, directing, excellence. Uh, we're not where we can be or should be. Well, we're surely not where we were 10 or 20 years ago. And we've had some great films making great impact out there. And I see Dan Busby over here from ECFA. I mean, part of NRB is holding up a standard financially, artistically, recognizing the best of the best, giving awards, honoring people, having a standard of membership. That's NRB, advancing biblical truth, promoting media excellence, but also defending free speech. That's why we're here today. And you really rang the bell, Dr. Moeller. I want you folks to think about it. Yes, he did. Amen. Seventy-five years ago, radio was really coming into its own. And right as evangelical preachers were at the top, I mean, and at the top in the ratings, they were taken off the air 75 years ago. It's an amazing thing. The American Broadcasting System and Mutual and others took them off. They just took them off. And Christian pastors and evangelists got together and started NRB. And within two or three years of uh, them coming together in D.C. and talking to the Congress and the regulatory agencies, they got back on the air. That's the beginning of NRB. Uh, what we have in our hand here is uh, that same kind of, of revolution in terms of communication. What radio had become 75 years ago, this at least has become again today. People are doing life. They're communicating. They're sending messages, receiving messages. They're doing all of life on this device. And if being taken off radio 75 years ago was a violation of First Amendment principles, being taken off of this today is a violation of First Amendment principles. And that's why NRB has started Internet Freedom Watch. And I want you to look for two things. All right, now, first of all, this was just kind of fun. At your table, find this little black thing, okay? This is called um, a webcam privacy cover. I was in a meeting recently where uh, the former CIA director, Joy, uh, Woolsey, was there. And I noticed he had a post-it note over his webcam on his laptop. And he said, you really should cover your camera on your laptop. People can see what you're doing. People can hack and see what you're doing. Well, anyway, I want to remind you the Holy Spirit always sees what you're doing. So this doesn't <laughs> block him. So that's an important reminder. But this is so other people. Uh, the bad guys can't see what you're doing, and it's a little something you could put over your uh, camera eye and think about uh, Internet Freedom Watch. The main thing I want you to see, though, is this trifold brochure that we've been working on. I don't know anybody else that's put something together like this. This is an ongoing project. NRB uh, really in 2010 got concerned. You remember Chuck Colson's Manhattan Declaration. That was taken out of the App Store. Apple removed that in 2010. We're talking seven or eight years ago. And if you look at the far left on your timeline there, you'll see on the far left, Chuck Colson's Manhattan Declaration taken out of the App Store. That was the beginning. And what we're seeing is a systematic, systematic shutting down, shadowing, ghosting, silencing of conservative and Christian content. And we've heard these anecdotes 
And most of these you'll remember, but nobody has put them all in one place until NRV started the John Milton Project several years ago under Craig Parshall. He did a great job laying the foundation. And we picked that up last year with a, a new and larger initiative called Internet Freedom Watch. And what you're seeing is the product of that research project. But if you'll notice, Facebook taking down Mike Huckabee, take Facebook taking down Todd Starnes, Twitter taking down Phil Robertson of Duck Dynasty, uh, GoFundMe removing a Sweet Cakes by Melissa uh, Group Funding. You'll see Prager University taken down by YouTube. You'll see D. James Kennedy taken out of the Anim Amazon Smiles program. You'll see Life Action and Lila Rose taken off Twitter. You will see Congressman Marsha Blackburn removed from Twitter. You will see the Franciscan University, their, their image of a cross, of a crucifix, taken off of Facebook because of shocking or sensational or excessively violent content. And that was put back up, but it was taken down. And you'll see that NRB TV, NRB TV was uh, taken off of uh, YouTube, our, our um, Google removed our YouTube live channel. They put it back. But you will see um, a systematic squelching, silencing, and removal of conservative and Christian content. So we want you to go to this website, internetfreedomwatch.org, and we have a much larger timeline, and we have a place on this website where you can tell your story. If you have been removed or silenced, we want you to enter that data. So this is a clearinghouse for this kind of information. We're constantly feeding this to congressmen, to the FCC, and so forth. And what's happened? Uh, since we launched Internet Freedom Watch at the National Press Club, we had Ted Cruz, we had former uh, Commissioner uh, Bob McDowell from the FCC come. Uh, what's happened since then? We have called for hearings. And it's amazing, we had the Zuckerberg hearing three weeks ago. Now what was interesting about that hearing was this. The big scandal was with the Cambridge Analytica and uh, so-called, uh, you know, sending you fake news or sending you pro-Russian advertisements on your Facebook. Everyone was concerned about what's being added to your Facebook, what's being sent to your Facebook. Well, folks, we see billboards all the time. I get messages all the time on the radio I don't want. I hear stuff all day that I don't want. It is interesting that the hearings turned into not what was being added, but what's being taken off your Facebook. And what's being taken off is people you follow, people you friend, people you like. You want to get those messages. You want to see what March for Life is doing. You want to see what uh, Folks on the Family is doing. You want to see what ECFA is doing. And they're taking these things off. And uh, I really have to commend our staff, uh, Aaron Mercer and Jim Smith. Uh, we had a strategy for these hearings. We sent five questions out to the committee members that we wanted to ask. We wanted them to ask about hate speech. We wanted them to ask about uh, First Amendment principles. Um, and all five questions were asked repeatedly in those hearings. It was just incredible. And uh, not only that, we were calling for hearings just about censorship. And within two weeks, we had the hearings last week in the Judiciary Committee with uh, uh, Marsha Blackburn and uh, with Diamond and Silk, bless their hearts, they, they gave it a go. And it's just, by the way, the first of many hearings we believe on this. Now, what is fascinating, uh, Jerry Nadler, boo, said this is a hoax. This is a hoax. Well, he needs to look at this trifold chart. It's not a hoax. He said the censorship of conservative and Christian content, this is just a hoax. And he needs to hear, and I quote directly now, what the FCC chairman, Ajit Pai, said, and it's a direct quote about edge providers. They routinely block or discriminate against content they don't like. That's the chairman of the FCC, Mr. Nadler. That is not a hoax. So folks, uh, what we want to talk about is um, demanding, appealing, expecting really nothing less than a, a true community, an open community. Facebook uses the word community, but what they're creating is an echo chamber. We want a level playing field. We want a town square for the world of ideas. 
And why not adopt a First Amendment standard? That's a try and true. We know it's about the government. But why not adopt a standard that we all understand? It's a fair standard. It's an American standard. Why shouldn't these companies just say, we're going to follow the First Amendment, comments from the left, comments from the right. You can't physically threaten someone. You can't show obscenity. But other than that, let's just have at it, everybody. And uh, no censoring of messages. This is what we're calling for. And um, we're calling for you to help us. Now, let's just uh, be realistic. Dr. Mueller's laid it out. What are the issues? The life issue, Jeannie. They want to censor the messages on life, on abortion. That's why they blocked Marsha Blackburn when she announced her Senate campaign. She talked about Planned Parenthood. They've, uh, life action, they've taken them off. I see our Israel friends here. You know, Alan Dershowitz has been kicked off of uh, YouTube for his, I mean, here's a classic liberal, not a right-wing conservative Christian, but because he wanted to expose uh, Palestinian terrorism and uh, support Israel, they took him off. Israel. Uh, Frank Gaffney's here. I'm just telling you, if you speak the truth about uh, the Islamist, about the jihadist, uh, Frank's been taken off. And uh, th listen, free speech and Sharia law don't go together. And the Sharia law won't broke any uh, criticism. And, uh, but the First Amendment will. And that's what we're arguing for. And now what I want to say to you all, the quickest way to lose the freedom of speech is not to use it. If you're a minister, talk about marriage, talk about Islam, talk about life, talk about Israel. If we'll all talk about this stuff together, uh, as Franklin said, uh, let's hang together or we'll hang separately. Let's, let's just do it together. And so what I want to say to you today is uh, to help me, to help us. Uh, literally, uh, what NRA has been for the Second Amendment NRB must become for the First Amendment. We're not there yet. But we are, we are living in an information revolution. Since Gutenberg, we have not seen something like this. Believe me. And we're not halfway there yet. And if we're taking off this device, we are off the playing field. So get behind Internet Freedom Watch. I'm going to ask you to join NRB. If you've got a cell phone, you can join NRB, okay? Because you're a Christian communicator. Your church, if you're a pastor, you ought to be live streaming your services anyway. You ought to join NRB. Um, you should come to NRB. We're going to be in Anaheim next year. And yes, you should give. We need money to make this work. And I'm going to ask you today, before you leave, to come see me or one of the vice presidents and say, you know, I I'm going to come alongside. I'm going to join you. I I'll send you a check. I'll help you out. We need you. We want you. And um, we, we can do it together. Now, one more thing to say about this. Um, we have a unique American perspective. Uh, the fact that I can even stand here and say this. Most Christians throughout church history, you know, everybody was controversial about the voting a year ago. And we've got to remember, most Christians throughout church history didn't even get to vote. And then those that do get to vote usually get to choose between some drug lord lackey in South America and some guy that's a uh, military junta kind of a guy or something like that. I noticed the World Magazine reported that uh, most of the Christians had to vote for uh, um, Putin in the last election in Russia. I mean, that's, as Americans, we've really had unique privileges in getting to vote and having some choices to vote, but, but actually speaking like this. Um, but uh, internationally, uh, our brothers and sisters are hurting. And uh, I'm going to be speaking with Senator Brown back later today uh, with a few other people. We're going to meet together. And we're going to be talking about Pastor Andrew Brunson in Turkey. I'm so pleased that he went over there directly for the trial to confront that government to get Andrew Brunson out. But we need to be thinking about the persecution. Uh, we're talking about the freedom to be on Twitter and so forth. But they're struggling with, you know, the freedom to have a worship service to uh, witness on the street, uh, to gather. And there are Christians all over the world be, being persecuted, particularly in the Middle East. We've seen, a, you know, a, a, the population of Christians in Iraq is one-fourth of what it was about 10 years ago. So, um, 
as we leave here today, I want you also to be thinking about that. And there's a new group called Save the Persecuted Christians. You remember Save Soviet Jewry? You remember that? It was part of the Cold War, Reagan, Thatcher, Pope Coalition. It really was. You used to see these banners out there. Well, there's a new group that I'm part of, Save the Persecuted Christians, and we're urging churches just to put these banners out and to think, get people to think. And when you leave today, you'll get a brochure of how you and your church can be involved. But I think, you know, that we're thinking about the First Amendment, the freedom of religion. And these people have not even the basic ability in many cases. We should pray for them and pull for them. That's really part as well of the freedom of speech, the religion, and the press. The president of the Southern Baptist Convention is here. Would you close us in prayer today, Steve Gaines? Uh, this man is a committed, personal witness for Jesus Christ. That's really been his agenda is to remind us of that. It's, it's huge. And he's also committed to scripture memory. And I can't think of uh, two better things because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you start quoting scripture and sharing scripture, you're going to believe more, but others are going to start believing it because that's just the nature of God's word. It is the seed. And um, we, uh, we know you've got a big meeting come up. We want to be praying for you in that meeting. Um, many of us here are Southern Baptist, but we have Presbyterians here today and Nazarenes here today, Catholic friends here today. We've got uh, Episcopalians here today, but I'm glad you're here. And um, uh, would you uh, close us in a word of prayer? Would you do that? Let's pray together. Our Father, we... Thank you so much for the opportunity to meet together like this. We thank you, Lord, for Jerry Johnson. We thank you for the good work that you have called him to. And, Lord, we thank you so much for Al Mohler. We thank you for how you have spoken to our hearts today. And Father, we thank you for Ronnie Floyd. We thank you for the Dobsons. We thank you, Lord, for the bots. We thank you for all the people that are in this room. And Lord God, we, most of all, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are in this room. Where two or three have gathered in your name, you are here, and we're so grateful. Father, we pray that you would be with our nation. Lord, we reach out to you from Maine, Lord, to Florida, to Texas, to California, to Washington, to Minnesota, back to Maine, all across the continental United States, and Alaska and Hawaii, Lord, we pray that today every Christian, Lord, would live under an open heaven, that every Christian would cry out to you in prayer, that we, your people, called by your name, will humble ourselves, pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, that you might hear from heaven, Lord God, forgive our sin and heal our land. Oh, God, forgive us for slaughtering babies, dear God. Forgive us, Lord God, for sexual immorality and pornography. Forgive us, O oh God, for racism. Forgive us, Lord, for not sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with lost people who are on their way to an eternal hell. God, we do pray for revival among your own people. And Lord God, these people that uh, are so against your gospel, Lord, it's because they've not been uh, saved by your gospel. Father, how we pray that we would love them enough to share Jesus with them. And Lord God, give them that hope that comes in Christ. We bless you. We honor you. Lord, this day, bless every meeting of every church. Lord, even the smallest church out there is a large church. Lord, it's, a, it's an outpost of heaven. And Father, we pray that you would let your people cry out to you today, Lord, in fervent, faith-filled prayer. And God, we pray that you would bring us back to you. Protect this nation. God, let us continue to be a light set on a hill, dear God. I, I pray, dear God, a city on a hill that's giving light to others. Do it for your glory and help us, we pray. We need your help, and you're a very present help in time of need. And this, Lord, is a time of need. We lift this up to you and pray that you'll do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think. And we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. And if you agree with that prayer, say amen.